Welcome to MCOM Solutions, Jake here. Today we're going to discuss why your emergency radio won't save you, at least by itself. Gear does not equate to readiness. It's not about what you own, but it's about what you know. Having skills and knowledge is going to give you the adaptability to react to situations as they develop. We all know that in an emergency situation, in a disaster, that it's not static. It's going to be very dynamic and things are going to change. The first area really that kind of, that definitely plagues the whole preparedness community is the buying trap. You know, most people stop here. They buy a, a nice piece of equipment, in this case, like a piece of a radio equipment, a, a radio or a couple of radios. And this new shiny thing they just stick it in a bag or a drawer or something like that and just assume that hey i'm covered in reality they're not so <clears throat> you may get these recommendations for equipment because you've been on youtube or somewhere else and you see somebody talking about hey this is the greatest newest radio out there it does all these amazing things and you're like well that is the solution to all my problems that's a half truth because radio equipment, especially usually requires some skill and knowledge to use effectively to its complete or its full capacity. So just having that new shiny new gadget doesn't mean it's going to do everything that it's capable of if the operator doesn't know how to use it correctly. These content creators may be giving great recommendations. Now, a lot of them, it's based on the assumption that you know what you're looking for and why you're buying it. We'll get into that in some of the common failures or pitfalls. But what we really need to focus on is the reality is you need to know what you're buying and why. Into the pitfalls or common failures, really focused around buying equipment. Your gear is honestly, it is useless without training you should start with some sort of basic communications plan. Now this may be a little diff difficult because you're like, well, I don't have any equipment to add into this plan and start training. Um, but answering yourself some of those basic questions in the beginning will help probably push you towards what type of a radio equipment you need to be looking for. And then once you have equipment, learning how to use it, learning its limits, not buying spare parts for it, buying extra batteries, having the ability to charge those batteries for that radio or radios if the power's out, which, you know, if you're buying something for an emergency, there's probably a good probability that the power's out. Luckily, a lot of the newer radios that are coming out, a lot of the handheld radios are coming with a USB-C charge port, not all, but some, and this makes it a lot easier to find alternate sources. You know, when you have charge cradles, those charge cradles, I've had charge cradles fail. Um, some internally, I don't know, moisture, humidity, something, dust, something fried on the circuit board inside and it doesn't work anymore. So if that's your only way to charge that radio, then you might be in a little bit of a pickle, right? When you really need it. So, and then building a routine for testing and inspecting, you know, doing that periodic maintenance, pulling it out. If it's not something you use all the time, it's your backup or whatever, and turning it on, doing good checks on it, making sure the batteries. Now, lithium batteries are, are pretty reliable. Some people will leave them on a cradle or on a, connected to some sort of charge, uh, charging cable. Now, the internet will tell you that, you know, leaving them hundred percent all the time will degrade the life of the battery or reduce the lifespan of that battery. And that's probably true. I've never tried it. Uh, they do recommend that you store, uh, or you keep them charged at about a 20 to 80%. Some say 50 to 80. Uh, I'm sure if you keep them somewhere in that range, you'll be just fine and you'll get the most life out of them. Now, also when it comes to storage, you need to consider, where you're storing them. I would not store them in a place that is not at least insulated. If it's a building, uh, you know, other than, you know, your home, uh, because those high swings in temperature, cold and hot and stuff like that is not good for almost all batteries for that say, for that fact. Um, so planning and skills, 
touched on planning before, but really skills just multiply the value of your equipment. You can have a UV5R baofeng radio, which are very common in the prepper space. There's probably millions of them out there. Um, and I even have many of them. In fact, it was the first amateur radio I bought uh, before I even got my license. The key there was I, when I did purchase it, I learned how to program it even before I had my license and I programmed my local repeaters in the area and I monitored and that was, that encouraged me to, and you know, made me realize that yes, I do want to get my amateur radio license. You got to, you know, understand that even if you're a highly skilled and you know how to use that a piece of equipment, it could be more valuable and than a thousand dollar radio in the hands of somebody that is low skilled in operating and using that piece of equipment. So it, it's not all about the price tag. Price tags usually go up as capabilities of those radios increase. That's, that's just the simple fact of it. Yes, there's some brand recognition stuff that comes into play, you know, you're paying for that, but a general rule in radios is you typically get what you pay for. So starting with planning, if you're overwhelmed with starting with planning, cause this, this is really going to help you shape your training, what you need to do to build skills. If you don't know where to start, I'm going to point you to mad gear company, provide a link down below. They have a new app or it's been out for a little while now. I think since June of 2025, that is a, they call it ready plan and it has some built in and they're keep, they keep updating it and adding more value to it. And you can even share it with your circle, your family, whoever your circle is, which is a great, great tool. I recommend checking it out. It's going to help you. If you don't even know what questions to ask yourself, it's going to help you point you in the right direction and get you started. It'll also help you focus. Once you have a plan, your training, as I mentioned, you know, getting the areas that meet your plan because your plan is for you and your situation, where you live, what your circle looks like, what the area looks like, what type of natural disasters do you face? Those type of things, the common, most likely events that you're going to experience in your lifetime or whatever timeline you want to apply to it. <laughs> so once all this is settled, you need to periodically, uh, you know, ideally I would say probably every quarter, six months at a minimum, once a year, stress test your plans, because if you don't stress test them, you're going to miss something, you know, and there is no plan out there, uh, that is infallible. It's just the nature of everything. Stress testing them though helps you and your circle build muscle memory into it. So when you are in that situation that you truly need this equipment, it's, it, it's not a frantic, Oh my gosh, I don't remember how to get to that in the menu. Cause some of these radios, especially when you get into the amateur radio space, the menus and the higher end radios, when you get into DMR, it can get pretty confusing when you get in the menus. And if you haven't used it in a while, and you are in a stressful situation, you're going to find yourself completely flustered and it may be detrimental to you or your, your circle. So to wrap up before you buy, start with a plan. You're going to build on it. Don't worry. It's not a waste of time. Plans should be evolving. Um, they should be a living document, something that is getting updated constantly you'll have a basic plan and then everything else just just keeps building on that and be real with yourself as i mentioned if you ask yourself am i willing to study and take the amateur radio test to get my amateur radio license so i can use that type of equipment legally is it's a solid no for you then start with grms general mobile radio service it is going to give you the same or very similar capabilities, at least in the UHF frequencies as an amateur handheld radio. Now it is pretty limited to there, but the barrier, the learning is pretty easy. The radios, if you buy a GMRS specifically 
approved radio for many reputable uh, manufacturers, it's going to be pre-programmed and ready to go. Now there is like anything, you get a new phone, you know, you, you switch, you know, from a Apple to an Android, you're going to be fumbling around a little bit, trying to figure out where things and settings and so on and so forth are. It's going to be the same with a radio. That's why it's good if you get radios to get the same type of radios, at least a minimum from the same company sometimes, because then at least the, if they've got a menu, they got a digital screen, you can work through things that typically be in the same spot. Oh yeah, the settings here, this is where I change this, so on and so forth. And then maybe consider, you know, adding something like Mestastic or some other mesh radios. I always like to recommend decentralized off-grid communication solutions because we're talking about emergency communications here and having reliance on something that has lots of centralized infrastructure involved is, is a recipe for failure. So you can have some of those in your PACE plan, your primary alternate contingency emergency or your layers of your communication plan, however you get it, you're written out. But ha you need to have at least one, if not two, different types of equipment that'll allow you to be operate in an off-grid decentralized manner. And then learn from others. Community, online, in person, join communities. Each radio type, whether it's amateur radio, GMRS, mesh radios, you know, like Meshtastic have huge online communities. You can go on there before you make a purchase and learn from other people's mistakes and figure out maybe this is not the right type of equipment for me. This doesn't meet my needs, whatever it may be. Don't just buy equipment, train with it. You know, join those local nets if you're doing amateur radio, do drills, do training, build muscle memory. It's gonna save you when you really need it. So if you enjoyed what we do here, you found value in this content, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, check out our website, social media links, and much more down below. Thanks for watching.